chapter two derivative rules practice test so this is a practice test that i would have given one of my classes a while back um what i want you to note that there is one question on the one that i posted for you that um isn't on my test but i'm going to do it anyway because i think it was a really good one i don't know why i took it off maybe i thought it was too hard but a good practice question and uh, you'll see there's a couple of little differences but basically the same test so um if you haven't already, please subscribe, like the videos, give some comments, let me know if you're having any problems and I'll be more than willing to help you out. Okay, so let's read the first question, differentiate the following functions. And you know differentiate means as take the derivative, give your answer with positive exponents. Always read the question carefully. If your teacher wants positive exponents, you give him or her positive exponents. So here goes y prime. Here we go. Nice and easy one. We have 20x cubed and 3. Bring it down times 6 is minus 18. Reduce the exponent by 1. The derivative of 7x is 7. And oops, what about this one? Well, remember that 1 over x squared is x to the minus 2. So that gives me minus 2x to the minus 3. Or I could put it right away over x cubed because I want it to be positive. Okay, letter B, let it be. So this one, we have um, a power here outside the brackets and we have a composite function. So we have to do a little chain rule going on here. So I have to do four. I leave everything in the brackets alone, reduce by one and take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of the inside is six X. And you should, you know, multiply out these little baby things. Don't just leave it like that. All the exponents are positive, so I'm done with this one. Letter C. If you see something written like this, do yourself a big favor and rewrite it first. So that's x to the negative 3. And the cube root of x squared is x to the positive 2 thirds. Okay, so now take your derivative. Make sure you change it to y prime. That's going to give me minus 12x to the minus 4. Well, we might as well put, well, we'll write it out this way first. And then we have plus 2 thirds x to the minus 1 third. We're subtracting 1. So with positive exponents, I'm going to have to put this x to the negative fourth in the denominator. That makes it positive. And this one, x to the minus one third. The one third is the cube root and I'm going to put it into the denominator. And what else is in the denominator? This three. So the two is in the numerator, this three is in the denominator, and I have the cube root, so you know a little three here, of x. And there you go. And the last one here, a product rule question. Teacher is going to try to get you to show him or her that you know how to do all the different rules. So don't think you're going to get away with not knowing something. You need to know everything. Okay, so if I did the first, that's 5x minus 3 in brackets times the derivative. I'll write it out the long way here, but the derivative of the second one here is just going to be 1 plus the second, x minus 4, times the derivative of the first, which is 5. And then I would just get rid of these brackets, 5x minus 3, expand this, plus 5x minus 20. And you're going to simplify that very nicely to say 10x minus 23. Okay, the next question asks you to, given the following function, sketch the derivative function directly below. So down here, I want to know where, what would the derivative of this be? Remember, all you have to do is get out your ruler. It's always a good idea to find out where zero slopes are. Well, it looks like right on the y-axis here. So I'm going to put my zero slope right here. And remember, you're drawing the slope function. So this would be like minus 2, minus 1, 2, 0. So I'm going to draw that. So it's like minus 2, minus 1, and 0. And then on this side, it starts going negative. So we have... Uh, like past the zero, we're going to start going down again. So minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. Okay, so minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. There you go. Not bad. This one, a little trickier. Find the zero slopes first, right here. I put that on my, my 
x-axis here. And if you look on this side of the function, it's kind of almost zero slope here. And then it goes up, 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 up. And you want to know where it is the steepest, which is about, oh, about, about, about here, right? Let's say about here, I would guess. So if that's the steepest, and then from there, see how I'm going up? And then I'm on the other side with my tangent lines. And that's going to go back to zero pretty quickly. So this is a maximum. So I'm going to dot that down here. And I'm going to put it about here. So it's maximum slope and then back to zero. So this has to come back down like this. And this was zero almost to this big spike here. Back to zero. And then on the other side you have the same thing again. right? So we have um, zero slope and that goes negative very quickly. And the most negative point, or most negative tangent before I start turning my ruler around is about here, which should be right across from this one. And that's negative. So this is the most negative point. So I'm going to dot that one down here and make it about the same distance because this is pretty nicely balanced. And it's going to go back to zero. So there you go. That was six marks. Ooh. Wouldn't you like to have had that? Okay, so again, we have the most positive, that is the maximum. The most negative is my minimum. And you look for the zeros. Okay, hope I'm keeping this on the page for you. It's hard to see what you're doing when you're only using a little iPhone for your camera. Okay, state the first principle's definition of the derivative, then determine the, the derivative of y equals the square root of x minus 2 using this definition. So... I was obviously trying to make sure that they know what the first principle's definition of the derivative is. And you should say, well, let's first of all let y equal f at x. So I'm changing this to be f at x is equal to the square root of x minus 2. That's always good format to do. And the first principle's definition I'm going, well, I've got knots from here, I'll write right here. So f prime of x is equal to the limit, that's what we're doing here, as h approaches 0 of f at x plus h. That should be like this. Got too many brackets going on here. Oops, it's going to be a little dizzy for you for a minute there. Okay, f at x plus h minus f at x all over h. Probably know that well by now. Okay, so don't forget, keep writing out that limit as h approaches 0. And now I'm going to put in x plus h where I see the x. So I have the square root of x plus h minus 2 minus f at x is the square root of x minus 2 all over this very small little increment h. Okay, so from here... Um, if your teacher asks for a first principles um, derivative, it's either going to be a radical or it's going to be a rational, probably one of those two, because they're the hardest ones, right? I could ask you to do a polynomial. Those are pretty basic. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply by the conjugate. And that's what you need to remember when you're working with radicals. You're going to multiply by the conjugate. And notice the conjugate is the very same thing as this one except I change the sign. If I multiply the top, I must do the same thing to the bottom. It's like multiplying by 1, right? Okay, now remember, you keep in this limit here. The limit as h approaches 0. And when I multiply these two together, I get rid of the um, radical signs, obviously. And when I multiply these two, I get rid of the radical sign, but it's negative, so I have to change the signs of what's in here. So minus x plus 2. Now you will know if you make a mistake because these numbers have to go away, right? You have to only have an h in the numerator for you to divide out the h in the denominator. So if, if that's your problem, you will know right away that something has gone awry. Okay. So here we go. Look in the top here. I have 
x minus x, I have minus 2 plus 2. I'm left with an h. That's exactly what I wanted because I want to get rid of this h. Don't worry about them being an h here. That's just x plus 0 minus 2. So this goes into here one time. I plug in h is 0 and I have 1 over and I have x minus 2, root of x minus 2, plus the root of x minus 2. That's 2 roots of x minus 2. And there you go, 5 marks. Ooh, yeah, got that one. Okay, number 4, determine the coordinates, that's x and y, of the point on the graph of this where the slope of the tangent is minus 2. Okay, so when you're doing questions like this, remember that you have to write out in math, what does this mean, where the slope of the tangent is minus 2. If the slope of the tangent is minus 2, we'll say, okay, well, m is minus 2, but that also means that f prime is minus 2. f prime, or, well, if this is f at x. So I'm going to say f prime of x is going to be equal to minus 2. Um, that's the slope that I want, but I want to know the coordinates when this is minus 2. Find the equation of the tangent and show that this tangent touches the curve y equals blah blah. Okay, well let's worry about finding the tangent first. Okay, so I'm going to say let y equals f at x. So f at x is going to be equal to x squared minus 8x plus 14. And I'm going to do f prime x, because it's calculus, always take the derivative, it's got to be worth something. Okay, so I get 2x minus 8. And I know that this was given, so I set that equal to 2x minus 8. I bring 8 to the other side, that gives me 6 equals 2x, and that means x is equal to 3. Okay, so I know the x value is 3, so I'll say when x equals 3, what's y equal to? Or f, I used f and x, so f at 3, not the prime, okay? This is a coordinate, coordinate, you go back to the original function. So 3 squared minus 8 times 3 plus 14. Um, that's uh, 9 and 14 is 23, and this is minus 24, so that gives me minus 1. So therefore, the coordinates, coordinates um, where slope is minus 2, Coordinates is R, whatever. Um, so I had X was 3 and minus 1. This is the point where the slope is minus 2. Okay, so that's first part of the question done. Find the equation of the tangent. Okay, so equation of tangent, you think Y equals MX plus B. Um, it didn't ask for a type of equation for the line, so standard or y equals mx plus b form would be acceptable. Always check whatever you're asked for. So I have m is minus 2, x is 3, y is minus 1. Plug it all in, right? Minus 1 equals minus 2 times 3 plus b. Minus 6, bring it over here. b is going to be equal to 5. So my equation is y equals minus 2x plus 5. Okay, show that this tangent touches this curve. Okay, so if this tangent touches this curve, I want to know where they're equal. Where are they at the same place? So all I have to do is set them equal to each other and solve. Okay, let's bring everything to this side, set it to zero. So it gives me x squared, brought this over. Bring this over, that gives me two x's on this side, and five minus four is one. And you should know right away that's a really nice question to factor. Ooh, I'm way down the page, so sorry. I'll wait a second. Okay, so now that I have this, I want to factor it, so it gives me x plus one squared. So x equals minus one, that's the x coordinate, right? I don't have enough room here for my paper. That's a problem. So if x equals negative 1, what's y going to be equal to? You use the original function, and I find out what is f at minus 1. And f at minus 1 is going to be minus 1 squared, minus 8 times minus 1. Oh, wrong equation. 
I need to use the equation that I'm trying to find. Went back to the original one. Okay, I want this equation. X squared minus X squared. So I'm going to be minus minus 1 squared minus 4 times minus 1 plus 4. Um, the point of contact. So when I plug this in, that's going to give me minus 1 plus 8 is 7. So the point is, let me say maybe point of contact if you had a little more time. I'm trying to get through this without being too long. So minus 1 and 7. Okay, let's go to question number 5. Oh, just I want to make sure that I'm on the same questions as you have that I gave you. Uh, three, four. Okay, you have the same one on your test. For the function of 1 over x squared plus 1, determine the equation of the tangent in standard form at the point 2 and minus uh, 2 and 1 fifth. Okay, so 2 and 1 fifth. So I'm trying to find the slope, right? So I want to find slope first and equation. Okay, so we need the derivative. The easiest way to take this derivative is to write it with x squared plus 1 in the numerator to the power of negative 1. Okay, so y prime is going to be negative x squared plus 1 to the minus 2 times, don't forget the derivative of the inside, 2x. So I get negative 2x over x squared plus 1. Okay, the reason I like to write f at x, then you can put f at minus 2 or f at 2 or whatever, but you can still write it like this, y prime when x equals 2 equals, so I put in 2 here, I square it, that gives, or 2 times 2 is 4 and it's negative. In the denominator, I have 4 plus 1 is 5. Oops, I forgot something. Squared. So it's 25. Yeah, don't forget when you move things around. Make sure you keep all the exponents. So this is my slope. So I'm going to write y equals mx plus b. Now notice this question asks for standard form for the equation. So that's not y equals mx plus b. That's ax plus by plus c equals 0, right? Okay, so now I have to plug in everything. I have x is 2. I can write that all over here for you. y equals 1 fifth and slope is minus 4 over 25. Plug that in, find b. Mm -mm -mm. So 1 fifth equals slope, where's my slope? Minus 4 over 25 times x, which is 2 and plus b. So that's minus 8 over 25. I bring it to the other side, minus 8 becomes plus 8. This is 5 over 25. So 8 and 5 is 13 over 25. And that's my b. So in y equals mx plus b form, right now I have this. y equals minus 4 over 25x plus 13 over 25. If I want standard form, I'm going to multiply everything by 25. So I get 25y equals minus 4x plus 13. And in ax plus by plus c format, I have to bring everything to this side. So there's my ax plus by plus c, which is minus 13 equals 0. And that would be your standard form for your function, your tangent line. Okay, this is where I put a little star, and that's because question number 6 that you had was this one here, which I think is a very good question. It says, find the numbers a, b, and c, so that the graph of f at x equals ax cubed plus bx plus c has x intercepts at 0, 0, and 2, 0 in a tangent with a slope of minus 22 when x equals 4. Okay, so... When you see a question like this, like don't panic, first of all. But what you want to think of is, what do I already know? What do I know? Why? What are these little clues here? So this tells me when x equals 0, f at 0 is 0, right? We're on the same page here. We're all there. Okay, so I know that 
f at 0 is equal to 0. I also know that f at 2 is equal to 0. Right? That's what these tell me, these x-intercepts. Okay, so if f at 0 equals 0, then if I plugged in f at 0 is equal to, I put 0 here, put 0 here, and I get 0. So I get a times 0 cubed. This is really kind of a waste of time writing this all out. But nevertheless, 0 is equal to c. So if c is 0, that just gets rid of that one. So um, what's f at 2, though? That might be a little more interesting. f at 2 is going to be a times 2 cubed plus um, b times 2 plus 0. I don't need to write the c in. So f at 2 has to be 0 is equal to, this is 8a plus 2b. 8a plus 2b equals 0. Okay, that's one really handy little equation that we're going to save. Now the other part of this says a tangent with a slope of minus 2 when x equals 4. So this is telling me that f prime at 4 is equal to negative 22. So the slope when x is 4 is minus 22. So let's take the derivative of f and x. So f prime at x is 3ax squared plus b. Look, we've got an a and a b, we've got an a and a b, and we know that f prime at 4 is minus 22. So minus 22 is equal to f at 4. 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48a plus b. Okay, so I have a second equation with two unknowns. So second means two. So I have this one and this one, and now I can put them under each other. I'm going to take this equation number one, and I'm going to multiply it by six, so I get 48 a's here, so I can match them up. So one times six is going to be equation three. And that's six times zero is zero, 6 times that is 48a, and um, 6 times 2b is 12b's. And I'm going to subtract. Why am I subtracting? Because I'm eliminating this. So minus 22 minus nothing is still minus 22, and b minus 12b is minus 11b, so b is equal to 2. Hooray, we're getting somewhere, right? So if b equals 2, that means a has to be equal to, where's our nice little equation? This one here. So 0 is equal to 8a plus 4. b is 2. So minus 4 is equal to 8a, and a is equal to minus 1 half. So that means f and x is equal to minus one half x cubed plus two x plus nothing, right? Okay, you can double check your intercepts. When x is zero, y is zero. When x is two, I would have um, minus four plus four is also zero. So everything checks out and that's how you would do that question number six. Okay, let's move on here. Get that out of the way. And this question you do have on your test it says the height m of a bird is multiplied by h of t equals 1 over t plus t between 1 and 6 seconds. And the question asks you to determine the coordinates of the point where the tangent is 0. The tangent is horizontal, that means slope equals 0, right? Or the derivative is 0, or h prime t equals 0. Okay, so first we're going to take the derivative, obviously. h prime t is equal to 1 over t, so this is t to the negative 1, so that's negative, negative 1 t to the negative 2. And the derivative of t is 1. 
and I want to know where is it zero. So I'm going to set zero here equal to, and this is going to be minus one over t squared plus one. Bring the one to the other side. Minus one equals minus one over t squared. So that means that you get rid of the negatives. They both have negatives. So t squared, t squared is equal to one. So t is equal to plus or minus one, but look at the restriction here. Don't get caught. It has to be between one and six seconds. So I'm going to say, but t is in this domain. So therefore t is equal to one. Okay, so I've got the t coordinate. I also need the h at one because I want coordinates. Don't forget, don't so 1 over 1 plus 1, that is 2. So therefore, 1, 2 is where blah, 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 0, right? Where the horizontal slope is. Is this point a minimum point or a maximum? Now, at this point in the game, you haven't done first and second derivative tests, so we're going to have to do a little calculation. So if t equals 1, the height at 1 is equal to, we said 2, right? So when t is equal to 2, what do we get? h at 2 equals, so we'd have 2 and a half. And when t equals 3, we would have h at 3 equals 3 and 1 third. So therefore, it is a minimum because it's increasing past that point. Okay, now this question I don't think is on yours. Oh, my computer keeps going down, but um, no, you didn't do this one, but we can do this one as well. It says an environmental study of a suburban community suggests that T years from now, the average level of carbon monoxide in the air will be this parts per million. At what rate will the carbon monoxide level be changing with respect to time one year from now. So I want to, you're trying to find um, Q prime at one, right? That's going to be your rate. So Q prime at one, you need to take the derivative. So Q prime at T is going to be equal to, what's this two times a half? That's 0 0.1 T plus 0 0.1. And Q prime at 1 is just going to be um, 0.1 plus 0.1 is 0 0.2, and it's parts per million. That was a pretty easy question. By how much will the carbon monoxide level change in the first year? In the first year, that's a slope between two points. So it's a slope of a secant. We want a secant here. And that's going to be, the slope is going to be f at 1 minus f at 0 over um, in the first year. So we have 3 point, do, 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 rise over run. So what's f at 1 here? That's 0 0.5 plus 0 0.1 plus 3.4. So that's... Um, 3.55 minus 3.4. This is all over 1, right, in the first year. So this is still over 1. And that gives you 0 0.15 parts per million in the first year. Okay, let's move on. We're almost done. Back page. Imagine you'd have 70 minutes to do this. Find the derivative of each of the following. Leave your answer in simplified factored form. Okay, so this one is testing your knowledge of the quotient rule and the chain rule, because it's to the power of three, right? So let's, let's get going here. F prime X equals, okay, we take the derivative, three, this chain rule, leave the inside, one plus X squared over one minus X squared, Reduce this by 1, so it's to the power of 2. Now the derivative of the inside. So remember the derivative of the inside, you're going to need to use the quotient rule. 
right? The quotient rule. Okay, so, ho, oh, 1 minus x squared, d high, the derivative of the top. So you're not worried about this anymore. You've looked after that right here. The derivative of the top is 2x minus high 1 plus x squared. d ho, derivative of this, minus 2x all over ho squared. 1 minus x squared squared. Okay, so next part. We're going to do some simplifying here. Um, let's leave this. Just simplify what's in the brackets first. I hope I have enough room to do this for you. Okay, so this is going to give me 2x minus 2x cubed. And this one is going to be um, minus 2x. You have to watch this minus sign, right? Careful. So I do minus 2x, so that's going to be plus 2x. And then this times this is going to be negative 2x cubed, but it'll be plus 2x cubed all over 1 minus x squared squared. Okay, so this one cancels with this one, and we have 4x over this. 3 over 1 plus x squared, 1 minus x squared, and in the top I said we have 4x over 1 minus x squared squared. Okay, so if you're multiplying all these things together, you should be able to see that what we have here on the in the top, we have 4x times 3, which is 12x times, so we have 12x times 1 plus x squared, right? This times this times this one. And in the denominator, I have 1 minus x squared. I got rid of the square here, didn't I? Somewhere along the way. So I had 12x times 1 plus 12x squared, and in the denominator I would have 1 minus x squared to the power of 4. Leave your answer in simplified factored form. So that to me looks pretty simplified and factored. I don't think I would have expected you to leave it in anything better than that. No, that's good. Okay, number, letter B of number 8. F at x equals this times this. Simplify, you do not need to rationalize the denominator. Hmm, okay, wasn't even thinking about that at this point. So let's do F prime x. So we do the first times the derivative of the second. Remember this is to the half power. So I do 1 half 4 plus 2x to the minus 1 half times the derivative of the inside. Don't stop. That was just your first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So the second is the square root of 4 plus 2x times the derivative of this is going to be 5. Okay, now the question asks you to simplify it, so you need to do a little better than, than this mess. Okay, so let's look what's in the numerator. So I have 5x plus 6 times 2. And in the denominator, I have 2. Always check what's up top, what's, what's up bottom. And then this had the square root of 4 plus 2x. Okay, did you follow all that? So numerator, denominator, denominator, numerator. Plus, and I have 5 times 4 plus 2x. Okay, so in order for me to simplify this, I have to find a common denominator because I have to add them. Right? There's a plus sign in the middle there. So if I'm going to add them together, I have to give this the same denominator as this one here. Okay, so um, we can divide these two out. That makes it a little bit easier. And now I'm going to do this. So I have 5x plus 6. I'm going to put it in bracket just to keep it, keep it clean. And I'm going to multiply this part here times the square root of 4 plus 2x and the square root of 4 plus 2x. 
Okay, so it's like multiplying by one. So this is going to um, get rid of the radical sign. So I have five X plus six. And my common denominator is the square root of four plus two X. And this now is going to become plus five times four plus two X, because I got rid of the radical. Okay, so simplify a little more. 5x plus 6 plus 20 plus 10x over the square root of 4 plus 2x. So that's why they said you don't need to rationalize the denominator here. So I have 26 plus 15x or 15x plus 26, whatever way you want to write that, over the square root of 4 plus 2 x. Ooh. And the very last question here, it says y equals this. Do not simplify. Show me that you know the first step only. So this is one to make sure that you have got all the plans here going. Okay, so we have a product. So we have the product rule. We also have this exponent stuff going on. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to do the first times the derivative of the second. Now don't fret if you do yours the other way around. That's six, four minus seven x cubed, and I'm reducing it by one, times the derivative of the inside. This is where most people make a mistake. So this would be minus 21 x squared. Okay, so I did the first. This is the derivative of the second, right? Derivative of the second. So 6, leave this alone, reduce it by 1, derivative of the inside. Plus, now I'm going to write the second, minus 4, 7x cubed to the sixth, times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of this one is going to be 2 times 5 plus x, reduce it by 1, it's just 1. The derivative of the inside of this is just 1. So there you go. You don't need to simplify it. The test was to see that you knew all these little steps. Okay, I hope this helps you with your unit test. There's um, lots of math going down here, and I'm, I'm sure you've been working very hard at it. I wish you all the best of luck on your unit test. Although, as I always say, luck will have nothing to do with it. It's all in the practice. Bye for now.